Good, beautiful morning, everybody. Silas back again today, and today we are at the swap meet. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of people here set up, so I don't know if we'll find anything good. Last time I came, I said I'm only gonna buy stuff if I actually need it or want it for myself, and I wound up buying about $800 worth of stuff to resell. <laughs> That's okay, I made about 2,500 bucks. I still have some stuff left over to sell. So who knows what we'll find this time? Let's go see. Yeah, normally this is pretty packed out, but uh, it's not that packed out today. Looks like about half the people outside that are normally here. I don't know what's inside yet, but I guess I'll figure it out. Well, not much so far. Found this old thing here. It says made in Germany on the back, so I'm assuming it's probably VW, 70s. I don't really know. If you know what this is, let me know in the comments. It was five bucks, so why not? All right, guys, I'm out here at the junkyard taking a quick break, and it has been raining and cold today, so I'm a little bit soaking wet. But you want to know what's not soaking wet? A Ridge wallet. I gotta say, this thing is pretty awesome. Check out the Damascus on that thing. Really, really cool. On the back side, it's got a little money clip right there. Super, super handy. I've actually been using this wallet for about two months now, and I really like it. With this wallet, I'm able to carry everything I need to carry. Right now, I have five cards in there, and they fit fine. I can fit way more than that. In addition to wallets, they also sell key cases. Super handy. So if you're in the market for a really good quality wallet, go to ridge.com slash adventures. That's ridge.com slash adventures. Huge thank you to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video and making videos like this possible. Now let's get back to the action. All right, guys, I'm back out here at my place now. I am done at the swap meet. I didn't record a whole lot there just because there were people playing music and I don't want to get a copyright strike. So I figure what I want to do is I want to set everything out and then we can kind of go through and see what I bought. I spent about $700 five dollars if i remember right and some of that was stuff i'm keeping but most of it was stuff to sell and there we go all sorts of good stuff not a whole lot of stuff this is what all i got some of the stuff, like that wheel there, the guy, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. So anyway, I'm walking around. I think the first thing I bought was that four barrel Carter right there. And where's it at? That 59, oh, right next to it, that 59 Ford carb right there. I bought those from a guy for 20 bucks a piece. And then I'm walking around for a while and I didn't really see anything else. I think I bought that plastic instrument cluster there that I haven't identified yet and didn't really see anything else yet. Then I walk up to a booth and there's a guy unloading a U-Haul truck, two guys. And there's that Edsel grill sitting there. And I said, how much is the Edsel grill? And they said, we're not pricing anything until we get the whole thing unloaded. And I said, oh, okay. So I stood around and waited for a minute and talked to a few other guys and they weren't getting unloaded. And I thought, man, I'm gonna lose out on all the other deals here if I don't hurry up and do something. So I said, look, I'll give you 50 bucks right now for the Edsel grill and then I gotta go. And they said, okay, go ahead. So I gave them 50 bucks for that and then I left. I went shopping elsewhere and I got this thing of keys and I got these license plates and a few other odds and ends. And then I came and I found all these inside the building. There's a bunch of model cars here. I think these are all Mopars at this end. That's a Ford extended cab out of the 80s. Just kind of unusual. I hadn't seen one like that. And then that's all Tri-5 stuff there. So anyway, I bought all that stuff. And some of these carburetors are pretty good ones. Like that's for a 70 or 71 Mopar 440. So anyway, after I got all that done, I walked back by and those people are still unloading that U-Haul truck. And I noticed they had just set this rainbow bread sign out. And as I'm walking up there to ask about it, another guy walks up there and says, how much for that sign? It's a double-sided painted sign. The other side's not quite as good as this side. But they told him they wanted $140 for it, is what they would take for it. And the guy's looking at it, and there's another guy, and he says, yeah, that's neat. And then they noticed this wheel that's laying over there, and they said, oh, it's got, he's got one of those SS wheels as well. And so, I don't know, and they keep him hauling around, him hauling around. So finally I said, look, I'll give you $140 for the sign if you throw in the wheel. And the guy was like, oh, you know what, sure, I'll do that. So I gave him $140 bucks for the sign and the wheel. So I loaded everything up, got everything loaded up, ready to go, and then I remembered I had seen that in their pile as well. And I thought, well, I'll go see what they want for that. And I walk over there, and they used to have this on some sort of jalopy or something like that. And I said, what do you gotta have for that? It's a Studebaker hood that they chopped up, but it still has a neat looking grill and little hood scoop on it. And they didn't know what they wanted for it. And I said, well, I'm leaving, I'll give you 40 bucks for it. And they said, sure, I'll take it. So I gave 40 bucks for that, and then I left. There's some pretty good license plates here. Some of these I gave more for, some of them I gave less for. I have a really cool idea in mind for these license plates, which I'm not going to mention it in this video, but I might mention it at some point in the near future. So if I mention it in the near future, you already know what I'm talking about. If I don't, then we'll have to wait till a later date. 
but these are pretty cool there's a matching pair of centennial missouri's there i may just go ahead and keep those separate and try to sell those i don't know if they're worth any money if they're not worth any money then my other idea is going to work really good most of these carburetors are 60s fords they got two four barrels and a bunch of two barrels i used to sell a ton of those i haven't sold any for a long time but i thought maybe i'll try it again and then this little Hudson badge right here, I was looking at that and the guy says, you want that, you can have it. So, I mean, for the price of free, I'll take it. Over here are the few pieces that I bought to keep for myself. There's this Dodge truck. I got that the same place I got those other models. You guys know me. I like my old Dodge step sides, Utilines. This is an old little Red Express of some sort. And it's, it's a little bit wonky. This, this one over here is messed up. But for what I'm going to do with it, it'll still be okay. And then there was this here. Five dollars, that's probably too much for it being broken, but I don't have any Thunderbird emblems that have the 352. This actually was probably never on a Thunderbird. This is probably off a Galaxy or something like that. Then there was another guy there who had a bunch of toy cars, and I really like 67 and 68 Thunderbirds, that, that range there. They're actually all 67s, but in 68, Hot Wheels made what was called the TNT Bird, and it was a 67 Thunderbird just like this, but the engine was exposed, and it had side pipes and a little bit fancier in racing stripes. And they called it a 68, but it was actually still a 67. But anyway, this one here is in excellent, excellent condition, other than a little bit of damage on the hood. This is a very, very nice original example. This one here has a little damage, not too bad. It's still pretty good. And then he had this little thing here. It's like a little load lugger truck. This thing here actually comes down, and the little dumpster comes off. It unhooks. And I just thought it was kind of neat. And it was $15, so I thought, why not? I don't even know what brand it is. It's a Husky. I've got a few Husky Thunderbirds. But, I mean, for $15, it was actually, I think he sold it to me for $10 because I bought these cars here. And he gave me a discount on these as well. I think I gave him $230 for all three of these. And this one here, by itself, is around a $150 car. So, all together, I figured it up, and I spent $705. So, if we knock off the $245 that I spent on this stuff, what does that leave us? I believe that leaves us at $660. Not $60. Why am I saying that? $460 is what I spent on this stuff here. Sorry, guys. I did not sleep much last night. I was up all night editing. So, anyway, $460 is what I have invested in all of this stuff here. So, that's not too bad. I have no clue what that rainbow sign is worth. I don't know if I really want to sell it or not. I mean, if somebody offers me enough money, I'll let it go. The wheel I'm going to keep as well, more than likely, although once again, if somebody offered me enough money, I would let it go. I've already got two complete sets of those, and then I have a set of three, so I was missing one, so now I have a third complete set of those wheels. I have one set on my truck that I drive sometimes, I want to put a set on my trailers, and then the other set is just spares. Like I said, the license plates, I have an idea for those, then that I'm just going to sell. The Edsel, I haven't decided if I want to keep it or sell it, and then probably all the rest of this I'm going to sell, except for... That carburetor right there, that 50, 59 Ford, my dad needs that for an Edsel. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through and start listing these on eBay as I put them in the building, or I call it the building, you can't really see it, but it's that box truck I have over there with shelves in it. I'm gonna go ahead and start filling that up. And as I put the stuff in there, I'm gonna take pictures and get it listed. That way there's no, oh, I'll list it later. Now there's a few pieces like that one instrument cluster. I don't know what it fits yet. So that one I may have to wait on, but as much as possible, I'm gonna to try to get listed. I am supposed to have three old trucks come in this afternoon. So we'll see if they show up. So we'll see what sort of interesting stuff we can get into today. But before we continue, it is lunchtime. For lunch today, we've got some brisket, we've got some toast, we've got some baked beans, and we've got some salad. We've got some bread and butter pickles, we've got some coleslaw, potato salad, macaroni salad, cucumbers, absolutely delicious, and a root beer to drink. Now, if this meal looks good to you, how about you do me a favor and go ahead and hit that like button on this video, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. In case you guys can't tell, I'm really, really, really trying to get to 100,000 subs. I would love to get a play button. That would just be absolutely awesome. But in all seriousness, I really do appreciate everybody who likes my videos, comments on my videos, and subscribes to my channel. Thank you, guys. You know, it's one thing I didn't think out very well when I had them build these shelves in here for me is I should have made one area, like right here at the back, where it wasn't all the way to the top. I should have had them just stop right there and then leave these two little sections off right here. That way I'd have a better area to take pictures because now it's kind of hard for me to take pictures when I'm inside just because there's, I can't get any good top shots, as you can see here. So I have to take front shot, and if I want to take a picture of the back of it, I got to do that. I got to constantly rotate them around. So what I got to do if I want to take a top shot is I actually have to roll it down. I mean, it's just, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a little bit more labor intensive and it's just slightly annoying. So uh, at some point in time, I may just put a little table out here or maybe a little fold up table that I can put right here at the back. That way I can take easier pictures. I don't know. We'll decide that later.
Well, I was supposed to get three old trucks today, but so far this is the first one that's shown up. So I don't know if the other two are coming or not. I kind of doubt at this point one might show up, but the third one I doubt is going to show up. This truck here, you guys may recognize this truck if you watch Mr. Good Player's videos. This was at an auction that he was at. A buddy of mine bought it, and he was going to try to drive it and use it, but the clutch is bad. The doors are rusted out. The floor is rusted out. So he changed his mind, decided he'd just go ahead and bring it to me and sell it to me. This is another one I wanted to go to the auction. I actually left a bid on this truck, but I couldn't look at it in person, so I didn't want to pay too much for it. But uh, it's not, I mean, this truck is one of those weird ones where the bottom end of this truck is rusted to nothing. The floors are rotted, gone. I mean, horrible, horrible rust. But then up here above the windshield where they usually rust out is rock solid with just a couple little tiny pinholes. I mean, I don't understand it. Usually these trucks are rock solid in the bottom and gone up top, so. This in here is a really good donor. If somebody needed a roof skin, you just chop it, chop it, and then somebody can take that and put it on their truck. This cab is probably repairable, but it's easier to find a much better cab than this. The only bad thing about this truck is that it runs perfect. I say bad thing, I mean, I guess that's a good thing, but it kind of hurts to chop it up when they run perfect. But you guys know me, I'm a little bit desensitized. It won't hurt that bad. It's got really, really good color. That blue and white nose, that will sell very easily. That'll be a good sell there. There we go. Not sure if it's a 327 or a 283. It's hard telling. I'd have to look at it closer. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to tell on these. I'm not an expert on old small blocks. I know it's one of the two though, and I know it runs. So I guess that's all that really matters. Once I get the cab and the front clip off of it, I'll be able to see it a little bit better. This is another one here that I'll probably go ahead and put on a pallet and try to sell. This side of the truck's even worse than the other side. These doors on this thing are rotted bad. I don't see them rusted that bad very often on big trucks. So like I say, it's just going to be a parts unit. Wall art slash parts. Lots of good parts to save other trucks though. It's got a good windshield in it. You can buy those new, but a lot of times people don't want the new ones because they don't look right. If you're doing like a patina build or something like that where you want it to look original. If you put a brand new windshield in it, it just doesn't look original anymore. You can tell it's a new windshield. So sometimes people want the old originals. It's got lots of good dash parts. It's got a radio delete. It's got the deluxe heater controls, temperature controls. It's got the good gauges in it. I think, yeah, these are the good ones. These are actual gauges. A lot of these old trucks have dummy lights in them and dummy lights are okay as long as they work, but I personally prefer to have actual gauges. Now I say that and new vehicles like what I drive don't have any gauges. Everything's a dummy light. Even if it has a needle, it's just a dummy light with a needle on it. This truck is a heavy beast, probably about five tons. I made my back end on the loader tip, but it's a solid steel floor. This is a very, very good bed here. I don't know. This is a little bit overkill for what I do though. You guys know I've been wanting to build a trailer and maybe I can build two trailers. I don't know, but really I don't want to deal. This has the big heavy truck axles under it and i don't want to deal with all that so i probably won't mess with that i probably will go ahead and save the bed just so i can use it for a skid to move stuff around i'll wheel it out back later but for now i got a guy here with some catalytic converters so i'm gonna take care of him and then hopefully that other old truck will show up as well well i got a hold of the guy that was supposed to be here with that other truck and he had a bunch of issues come up so he said he's not going to make it until tonight so he's just going to drop the truck off outside the fence and settle up with me later. I've got a date night tonight with my wife, so we're going to go out and do something tonight. I'm not sure what. Go out of town. So maybe tomorrow I'll run out there and check that truck out, and I'll add that to this video then. If not tomorrow, then I'll just come back out the next day. So I'll see you guys in just a few seconds. And good morning. We are back out here. I'm actually headed to an auction right now, but I've got about 30 minutes to spare. I don't have to get there that early. It's not that big of an auction, so I thought I'll just run by here, check out this truck, and show it to you guys. Here it is. I'm not sure what year this is. I'm guessing around a 49. Just guessing by looking at it. It is very, very rough. The cab corners are rotted, gone. Surprisingly, the doors, other than that crunch, don't look too bad. But I mainly just bought this truck for wall art anyway. It was either that or he was going to haul it to the shredder. So, those of you that complain about me chopping these old trucks up, I'm actually saving these old trucks from being shredded. I'm just repurposing them instead of trying to resell them because nobody would buy this truck complete unless I wanted to give it away for nothing. But yeah, it's got a nice deep rat nest in there, which is always fun because when I go to cut these things, of course, like I say, this cab probably isn't going to leave this frame. I probably cut the back of the cab off though. So when I do that, I've got to pull all this out and to do that, it's a major fire hazard. So. That'll be a fun one. I'll have to get me a rake or something and rake as much of that out of there as possible. Yeah, she's a pretty rough truck. He's supposed to bring me another one that's a little bit nicer, a little bit newer too, but also a little bit nicer. He was going to bring them both yesterday. Just this happened and that happened. He didn't make it. But he did make it with this one. I'm not sure what motor's in this. 
Could be a 216, could be a 235, I can't quite tell. I don't feel like digging in rat poop this early in the morning, so we're not going to mess with that. But yeah, definitely some good wall out there. Like I said, the doors, this door isn't too bad. I forgot to look at the other door. Yeah, the doors are pretty solid. They're not rusted out along the bottom, so I'll be able to resell the doors to somebody that'll actually use those. And then, like I said, I'll chop the back of the cab off. You just slice it right there, and then you cut across the floor. And then people use those. I've seen people use those for headboards on beds. I've seen people take those and make them into signs. They paint them with that chalk paint. It's where they can write on them with chalk and just different things like that. People use them for all sorts of neat stuff. I haven't sold as many lately as I used to sell. I used to sell a ton of those, but I feel like the fad kind of died out. But it's been a while, so I think it's going to come back again. That's the way that stuff usually goes. There for a while, I had a hard time selling these noses. I was only selling one or two uh, every six months, and it was just that was really unusual. So now we're back to where I'm selling quite a few of them again. Like I said, I'm headed to an auction, but that's going to be a separate video. I thought about doing it with this video, but I felt like those were two different topics. And then also this video... I know it's going to be a little bit shorter, but it's also going to be a little bit easier for me to edit. And I'm so far behind on editing already because I've been making these fairly complicated to edit videos. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to make a few simple ones so I can get caught up a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you guys for watching. If there's something in this video you like more than the rest, let me know in the comments what it was. I still have not figured out what that instrument cluster is off of, so that plastic one. So if you could let me know. And with that, I guess I'm going to go ahead and head out and go to that auction. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure, which is exactly what I'm about to do. We'll see you next time.